when you're looking at that demographic, you're trying mm-hmm. to make some decisions. Are you using the repaired order data that's in their shop management system? Are you using the vehicles in the area that you can see from registrations? How do we go about that? How do we determine what vehicles are in an area? So registration data is important, but it's also there. Are, there are some variables I found that play into that. Um, I relied heavily on that in the beginning, and then I found it kind of bit me. Um, what I was finding is that based on zip code, that although the vehicles registered there, uh, depending upon the the culture of the area, even a high number of individuals of certain median income would possibly work in a different part of town. So right. those individuals may drop their vehicle off close to the, where they work so they could pick it up right after work and go home rather than leave the car close to their house, get a ride really far to work and then come right. really far close to home to drive it back. Um, and that in the, in the actual city that I live in is a, is an, they call it a bedroom community. So we, we, everyone lives here, but nobody works here. There's a relatively high median income in, in the area that I live in with a, a population of, I want to say 36,000. So really pretty small. Um, but we're a suburb of Tulsa, Oklahoma that has over half a million people in the metropolitan area. Um, I think there's like 250,000 in the actual registered Tulsa zip codes. Uh, I would say a vast majority of the individuals that work there don't live in Tulsa. Right. Because there are a, a lot of suburbs outside of that. So we have to start looking at these at that. So you can't weigh heavily on one or the other. So you want to look at, yes, your, what vehicles are you working on? So you take a combination of that. So you know that the vehicles you're working on, the ones you're saying yes now. So do you have any any losses of, of – were there any availabilities of those vehicles? Were there any opportunities there that you said no to? Did you turn down the alignment on that BMW because you don't have a front tow bar or you start going into that information? So you've got – that's where the communication with your team happens. You know, how many times does a tech come to the front and go, hey, we don't have everything we need to do this job. We shouldn't. We shouldn't call for this. We shouldn't. Uh, we should sublet this out. We should, you know, so you've got to look at all the factors. Every time you've lost a sale, what, why? Was it uh, parts? Because that becomes a big one. For the majority, it, it's getting to where you need to have a parts professional in your shop. You know, you need to have someone that really knows them. Uh, it's difficult for to have a good writer that's good with people, that's technical, and that knows parts. That's not just a tech. And by the time you get a tech up on the front, he's not the people person you want. Yep. So... You, you have to look at all those. So yes, I look at the the registration data, look at the the information of the of the shops that we're servicing, and then beyond that, we go okay. Now now there's the the uh, non documented variable, which is w- what did you turn down? What did you say no to on the phone? 